Today I have the pleasure of being with uh, Judge Deborah Jones, and you're from Aniston. Aniston, yes, Calhoun in Cleburne County. Uh, we're in Houston County, and we're in one of the judges' courtrooms at empty today, uh, and it's, we're socially distanced. So do you have any objections to taking your mask off and us no, talking? No, I think uh, we're far enough apart, and that would just be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm 57 years old. I've been married 29 years. I have five grown children, two grandchildren. I'm the circuit judge in the seventh judicial circuit. That's Northeast Alabama, Calhoun and Cleburne County. I'm a Republican elected official. I was first elected in 2010. I was reelected in 2016. And I started my 31 year career in the district attorney's office and I served for four years there, and then I went into private practice where I had experience in every area of law. And then in 2010, I was elected and reelected in 2016. So I have had 125 jury trials, 25 as a prosecutor where I actually prosecuted the cases. And then through my 16 year career, I had another 25, you know, anything that uh, our citizens needed, you know, when they needed an attorney to go to court. And then as circuit judge, I've had 75 where I have presided over the trial. And so I had my court reporter look at the number of trials and in my mind, I thought that majority of what we did were criminal cases, but that was not so. It was really 35 uh, civil and 35 or more um, criminal. And I thought, how in the world, but it's because those criminal cases go two and three weeks and they're so heavy, you're dealing with murder, life and death decisions, child sexual abuse. We also have a hospital in our jurisdiction, it's Regional Medical Center. So we have a lot of medical malpractice and wrongful death, and those are very complex litigation. So we have very high specialized attorneys that come in and try those. So I have a broad range of actual courtroom experience you know, where the rubber meets the road, where the jury trials come in and, and what goes on with the average citizen in the courthouse, that's what I bring to the Supreme Court. Right now, we have nine justices on the court. Of those nine, seven um, are attorneys and two are trial judges. One is from your county, Brad Mendheim, and the other is Sarah Stewart from Mobile. So I would bring a perspective from the trial bench to the Alabama Supreme Court, and that's very helpful because what I do every day, the motions, the orders, the sentencing, the rulings on evidence, all of the numerous hearings, summary judgments, all of that is reviewed by the Alabama Supreme Court. They judge what the trial judges in all 67 counties do every day. So the Supreme Court is no place for on-the-job training. It's important that someone already knows what's going on and I can bring that to the court and I can just hit the ground running. So I'd love to serve everyone, ask for your vote. If you'd like to know about my website, it's www.judgedebrajonesforalabama.com. And also I have a Facebook where everybody can keep up with where we're going and what we're doing. It's Judge Deborah Jones. So I'd love to have you check out the campaign. The Supreme Court, some people doesn't understand you happen to be sitting right in front of the court reporter's desk. Yes. A lot on the Supreme Court, you're reading transcripts right. and stuff like that. You right. have none or very little actual testimony, correct? Well, what you're doing is you're reading in black and white all of the words that were spoken in the trials, in the court hearings, in the motion dockets. Um, you're looking at the demeanor of the witnesses in writing. And that's a whole different ball game than when you're sitting there calling the balls and strikes with the witnesses right in front of you. And the law says that the Supreme Court, the appellate courts are supposed to give deference to the jury and the judge. And why? Because we see and hear and observe the demeanor of the witnesses. And that's very important because a lot of times things are missed in the black and white reading. You know, if you see the witness and they're they're being evasive or dishonest. Well, you can pick that up, and it's hard to pick that up when you're reading the printed word in a transcript. And also, the flip side of that, when you hear them testifying and you think they're actually trying to answer the question truthfully, sometimes that does not come across in the printed transcript. So it's important for the appellate courts to give deference to the jury and the trial courts because the law says that we're the ones that see and hear the witnesses, and we are in the best position to determine their credibility. It is not 
okay for the appellate courts to substitute their judgment for that of the trial and the jury. What are some things that have stood out during your years of practice, uh, both as prosecutor, private attorney, and as a judge? I have, I have a very important case that I'm proud of. It's a horrible case. It grieves me to even talk about it, but it's important because it has affected all of our families in Alabama for the last 30 years. As a prosecutor, I was 26 years old. I had two cases come before me and one was just, you know, it was just un unspeakable. We had a five-year-old child, a boy, that was molested by his father, who was an EMT, and he lubricated objects to molest him in his anus. There was no physical evidence. And when we were going to prosecute the case, there really was not a felony that I could charge him with. Now, imagine explaining to the mom, this is not against the law. It was against the law, but it was a misdemeanor assault. There was no serious injury for it to be a felony assault, and it did not fit any of the felony sex crimes. So I also had another case where a little girl was molested with Barbie doll legs in that same way. And so I'd had enough. I wrote the bill and uh, went to Montgomery, testified, got the Children's Trust Fund behind us, the Office of Prosecution Services, and that bill passed. And of course, everybody wanted that bill passed. It is now the Sexual Torture Act, and what that does is this law makes all of those crimes a Class A felony. Now, a Class A felony carries a minimum of 10 years in prison up to a maximum of 99 years or life, and that's the same punishment for a rape. So now, someone, anyone, an adult, a, a child, any person that is raped with an object, that is a Class A felony just as rape in the first degree is. So I'm really proud of that. That has really affected families th just in all 67 counties for the last 30 years. And I had other prosecutors call me and tell me examples, horrible cases where they had had objects and couldn't do anything about it. So I'm really proud of that. I also had another case as a trial judge where we had a four-year-old that was kidnapped from her home. She was sodomized. She was raped. She had, um, bite marks all over her body. There was video of the man taking her across the street at around two in the morning. It was the security cameras from um, the pharmacy. And then video two hours later of him carrying her back across the street over his shoulder while she's weeping and crying. When he tries to return her, the mom is already awake. She's called the police. Everybody's looking for the child. So basically he was caught red-handed. We had DNA evidence, we had the bite marks on the little girl, and there were bite marks on his private part. She came to court and testified that the mean man stealed me and I bited him. And so she was under the age of six when it occurred and there was a brand new statute. The legislature had passed the law making it a capital crime for anybody to rape or sodomize a child under the age of six. Was well, she qualified? So we were the first jury trial that had that statute. So we had a lot of pre-trial hearings and motions. You have to make a good record. You have to you know, present all the um, policy reasons for the law to the appellate court so they can affirm or deny. I mean, you know it's gonna be a test case. So um, I ruled that the legislature was well within its rights to create a class of citizens that needed protecting, and then they could create the punishment for the law for the protection of those most vulnerable citizens. And I ruled on that based on um, the reason that, the policy reasons that the legislature created the law in the first place. They were looking at other states, particularly Texas, who already had this law. And it made it through the appellate courts. It started at the Court of Criminal Appeals, it was affirmed, and then it went to the Alabama Supreme Court and it was affirmed. So that's a good law and we need to protect the most vulnerable in society. So those two cases I think really affected a large number of citizens and I'm very proud to be part of that. I hate it that there's such horrible facts, but they are what they are. That's what you do with in court. What, what you do yeah. every day, you you know, the, the ugly, the nasty, the dirty. I mean, when citizens come to court, it's not pretty. You know, it's not pretty. And you need a judge who knows what goes on every day for the average citizen. Most of what I do, the citizens out there, if they come to court, they're in the circuit courts of the state. You know, there's a, there's a small percentage of, um, cases that are just like banking law or corporate law, um, and, and those are different. The majority of what the citizens 
experience in court um, is what we do every day. You know, criminal cases, car wreck cases, um, business disputes, um, contracts, things of that nature. As we close, why do you want to be Supreme Court Justice? I believe I have all of that experience, 31 years of actual courtroom experience and knowledge that I would bring to the Alabama Supreme Court. And I'm uniquely qualified in one area. I have prosecuted a capital case. I have defended as an attorney capital cases. I have sat in judgment of those cases as a presiding judge, and I have sentenced those cases. So I don't know that anybody on the court now has done that, um, but that is a unique perspective. And those are the most serious cases when you're either gonna put someone to death or you're going to give them a life without parole sentence. And you need a judge who knows how to do that. So I believe I'd bring that perspective to the court. I would love to serve you and I ask for your vote. Uh, one other thing, give me your websites again if anybody wants to help you or okay. can't, uh, give a donation or anything of that nature. All right, it's www.judgedebrajonesforalabama.com and the Facebook is Judge Deborah Jones. I encourage you to follow us and see what we're doing all over the state. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate